Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Mike. Welcome to Dark Horizon Creations. And I wanted to take just a few minutes and talk about my latest custom project and give you guys some tips on repainting Star Wars vehicles and other vehicles for that matter. So back in 2015, when I got back into collecting toys, the first two toys that I purchased were the Poe Dameron X-Wing and the Resistance X-Wing from Star Wars The Force Awakens. Really cool vehicles horrendously underscaled. Fast forward to 2019 and we have the Vintage Collection T70 X-Wing from the Rise of Skywalker. Awesome, awesome toy. Really incredible collectible. But I dislike the color scheme that they used for this ship. So I wanted to repaint one of these to match Poe's original X-Wing. And I began doing research online to look for the correct tint of gray paint to use as the base. And I went through several different vendors. You know, I went through Testers, Model Masters, Tamiya, Duplicolor, Krylon. None of those companies had a tint that was a close match to the gray paint that they used for that X-Wing. The closest match that I could find for it is this. Apple Barrel Pavement Gray is a matte acrylic craft paint. I've been using this from day one since 2015. I've had tremendous success with this paint. And early on when I began looking at custom toys and toy reviews and going on forums like TFW 2005 and uh, Figure Realm and places like that, all of the customizers basically said to stay away from this paint. You know, if I could summarize that. They talked trash about it, said it was no good. And one of the customizers on TFW 2005 who had been repainting Transformers for decades shared some tips with me and he told me this was what he used exclusively. And I've used it ever since and I've had tremendous success with this paint. Uh, it's very, very good quality paint. Yes, the pigment is thick. You can thin it down uh, and, and use it however you wish but I've never had any problems with this fading once I've repainted something and applied a, uh, the acrylic sealer by Plaid, which is the parent company for Apple Barrel and Folk Art. And they have metallic colors under the Folk Art brand, satin colors under Apple Barrel, but I've had tremendous success with this. And when I repainted one of the Resistance X-Wings before, this is what I used was pavement gray. And I use this a lot of times for a base. I use it for accent color from time to time, for repaints where I need a really dark gray. And I also use it in a wash versus using you know, black or something of that nature that you really don't find in nature. So uh, I'll turn to this. And I use more of pavement gray than I do any other color uh, on their palette. So I wanna talk to you about what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to have to repaint this by hand. You know, what I normally do in my process for repainting a ship like from Star Wars, you know, X-Wing, U-Wing, whatever, is I completely disassemble the entire toy. Completely. You know, and I will start repainting it from there. You know, masking it off, spraying the base coat on and things like that. And in cases where I have painted it on there, I would still disassemble the toy. I chose not to do that with this so far because I wanted to see what it was going to look like. And so far, I'm, I'm pleased with what I'm seeing. Now, if you're going to attempt to do this, or if you're going to attempt to repaint any kind of vehicle or ship by hand, let me give you a couple tips. First and foremost, use something like a can of air duster just spray it down. If you need to wipe it down, you know, do that. I keep all of my toys in sterilite containers, plastic containers. I don't have anything out on display anywhere so that there's no dust or contaminants or anything on the toys at all. The next thing that you need to do is you need to set up a clean workspace like I've got. You need to have 70% isopropyl alcohol on hand to use for cleanup. I don't use water. Now, the instructions from the company say this will clean up, particularly with, with warm water. 
you know, that's all you really need to use to, to clean this up. I don't do that. I use 70% isopropyl alcohol because I found this works much, much quicker and it, it's a lot easier to use this in small amounts. The only time I use water is for a wash. So when you go to paint uh, a vehicle like this or a spaceship, and let's just say you're gonna repaint this X-Wing yourself, you see all these different segmented panels on the ship that make up the exterior space frame of the X-Wing. You wanna paint each of these individually. And what you wanna do and I use the cap of the bottle. I just put enough paint in there to, to start with. And I will dip my brush in there. And let me see if I can adjust the camera so you guys can see this. I wipe almost all the paint off the brush. And when I begin painting the toy, I dry brush it on. Because I don't want a lot of paint on the toy. And I'll get one coat on and allow that to dry and go back and apply another coat so that the paint is not thick. You don't want paint gunking up on the toy. Dry brushing it is the cleanest, most efficient way to repaint something like this by hand because that allows you to control not only the amount of paint going on, but you have better control over where the paint goes and it allows you to judge what changes you may need to make. Like you guys see the panel lines, you can still see the white there. I can go back with a fine detail brush and take care of that. But if you're gonna repaint something like this, and you can see I've, I've started here because I wanted to see what it was gonna look like there and over the engine section, and back here where the hyperdrive motivator and the uh, fuel pump and all that stuff is, I wanted to see what this was gonna look like over this white section and orange because I can easily wash this off if I need to. At no point will that paint adhere where I can't get it off like spray paint. That is an advantage in using Apple Barrel Craft Paint because I can use warm water or isopropyl alcohol and go through and wipe the entire ship down and in three or four uh, sections and I'll have the entire ship clean again and the original paint won't be harmed because I don't use a lot of alcohol and that's the key in using this. You know, when when I put it on a paper towel or a Q-tip, I get the excess off of it so that it is just lightly damp with alcohol and, and use it from there to begin clean up. So I wanted to share those tips with you guys in case you're going to attempt something like this or you've ever been curious how I repaint some of the toys that I repaint. A lot of times that's what I'm doing. And in the past, I've only used a wash on several occasions. Most of the time when I'm repainting a ship and I'm painting the panel lines, I do that by hand using a detail brush. And I will either use uh, pavement gray, granite gray, or I'll use black. To paint the panel lines in because you know when you're talking about panel lines and you can see these here of course they're you know uh, these have paint on them so you're seeing the white but if you look here where the orange sections are and you see the panel lines where I've applied a wash before you can see that that's a shadowy area because there's a gap between the metal sections the plates and that's something you would find in real life you know, you're going to see a, a, a small amount of shadow in between these gaps and these lines. And, and that's what you want to go for when you're repainting panel lines like this. Now, because his original ship is gray, you're not going to see them as pronounced, but they're still there. And, you know, it's little details like that. And once I completely repaint the fuselage, and you can see that I've left it assembled for the most part to repaint it, if I see that this is going to work, that the paint is not going to have any discoloration or any smudges, that it's gonna have the uniformity that I'm looking for, and I keep it, then I will go back and begin doing all the detail work, including the orange stripes on the side, as well as all the detail work around the uh, engine nacelles and on the aft section of the of the space frame where the hyperdrive motivator and the fuel tank and the fuel pump and all that stuff is. 
So I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to direct message me on our Facebook page, Dark Horizon Creations, or you can shoot me an email at darkhorizoncreations at gmail.com.